Hello and welcome everybody to another video of VK1999. This week I didn't feel like doing a proper video, you know, because I've been kind of down lately and my voice sounds very weird. Uh, that could be due to, you know, a bit of illness or something like that. Um, but I'm alright enough to make a video in which I dunk on libertarians. That's going to be the best. So what I decided to do is go to the cesspool of the internet, which is known as TikTok. And I just put in hashtag libertarian and we're all gonna have a nice look at whatever the fuck we see there. So if that sounds interesting, then do literally nothing. Just keep sitting here. I'm gonna start now. Me pretending to be leftist in my uni access to get a good grade. So, um, that, that's an interesting take. Uh, I went to university and uh, they were not leftists at all. Uh, in fact, they despise leftism. So here's a little story I can tell you. Uh, so if you go to university and you do social sciences, uh, you learn a bunch of stuff about different theories, um, probably well known to use Marxism, in which you look at society as two classes, capitalists and workers. And uh, then there is the rational choice approach, which says there are no big systems, it doesn't matter, the only thing that matters is um, the choices individuals make. There's no grand story, there's no classes, there's just individuals making choices. And of course that means, well, um, the reason people, uh, I don't know, support the homeless is because they individually decide to. So this approach can explain a lot of things. Libertarians love it because they love individualism. But uh, the, the tiny issue uh, with it is that it does not explain why people go and vote. Because voting, one vote does not make a difference. So why would people choose to invest effort to go vote? And of course the professor had no answer. Uh, and he, he said, if you can figure out why individuals vote or join unions, then you will get a Nobel Prize. So this was online classes. Um, and I decided to do the, the best thing I could think of. And I wrote an expertly worded message, which was basically like, doesn't the inability of the rational choice approach to describe all of human behavior show that it's not a viable analysis of humanity? He got fucking pissed. If he knew what my face was, he would have hated me for the rest of the semester. Uh, luckily, I dropped out before then. Um, but no, they're not leftists. They're just the same neoliberals you find everywhere. So let's look at Andy Coons, who describes himself as a libertarian ANCAP. Those are different ideologies, I don't know what the fuck he's up to. Um, let's just see, you know, what kind of stuff he likes. I'm pro 2A, but... By 2A, he means the Second Amendment, you know, the right to bear arms in America. Stop right there. I'm just saying that... Don't, don't even finish that sentence. Whatever you're about to say is stupid and anti-2A. <laughs> Nobody is more pro 2A than me. Oh, really? Prove it. How pro 2A are you? Well, I believe in common sense gun laws and moderate restriction on firearms. I mean, <laughs> you shouldn't have the right to own a tank. <laughs> He's making the argument that anyone should own a tank, which, um, interestingly enough, um, there are countries in which you can own tanks, you know? There's private tank collections out there, and in some countries you can even take them on the road, so... Uh, and by the way, there's countries like England without the Second Amendment, so... Whatever. I mean, how pro 2A are you? Observe. So, um, I think this is a merch plug, right? He's trying to sell his merch. That's all this is. Uh, civilian owned fighter jets, you know? I would like to make a libertarian counter argument. So, libertarians uh, see two sets of rights you have. It's positive rights and negative rights. So a positive right is uh, something you get. Like, for example, if you have a right to education, you get free schooling. That's a positive right, you get something. A negative right protects you from something happening to you. So you have the negative right to not be murdered. Now, I would wonder, if you have a fighter jet and you don't know how to fly it, uh, so you crash it into a kindergarten, aren't you violating the, you know, negative right of the children to not be murdered by an incompetent pilot. Just a thought experiment, you know, just making stuff up. Okay, so he thinks that socialists don't understand economics. Um, 
You should watch my channel, my friend. Um, it is really enlightening for people who don't know what socialism is. Uh, by definition, it's an economic policy. So, um, I don't know, maybe when he says socialism, it's Bernie Sanders or something. Two summers ago, peaceful protesters tried burning down the entire country because some black guy died. But then... Some black guy died and they burnt down the entire country. Um, if I recall correctly, they actually asked for, you know, uh, the, the cops to take responsibility, you know, individual responsibility, like the libertarians fucking love. So, you know, um, let's keep watching. A brave child abuser, a woman beater, and a thief were all shot by a fat little boy with an AR. And that sent a message to people everywhere. In this country, you can be shot just for being a lawless pedophile. That puts a target on every politician's back. But that's my job. Uh, what happens next time some black guy dies? Uh, are all the cities? Not gonna get burned down? It's not a country I want to live in, man. Okay, it's just a parody of American politicians who are anti-gun. Um, here's a fun fact about me. I do like guns. Yeah, I, I don't actually own any because, you know, the licenses are hard to get in Austria. Uh, but I do think that the working class should never be disarmed. Uh, but this one is making the argument that um, people with AR-15s shot protesters and that's why the country didn't burn down, which... My friend, even on something we agree on, you decided to pull bullshit. Come on, mate. What is libertarianism? Great question. Oh shit, we should have started with that one, shouldn't we? Um, let's see what he has to say. Question. I'm so glad you asked vicariously through me. To put it in the simplest terms, libertarians believe in property rights as a fundamental. This is derived from the concept of self-ownership. You and your body are your own original property. Therefore, what you do with your body, how you spend your time, and what you earn with that time and effort is yours and yours alone. Property rights. Okay, um, that, that's interesting. Um, we should have property rights because people have their own bodies. Um, Self-determination and property are very different things. And did you know that sometimes property, maybe of someone else, can stand in the way of your self-determination? What if you want to go to the beach with your self-determined body, which, you know, is your property. Um, but some guy put the fence around it and says he owns it now. Well, that's property, and that's in the way of your self-determination. So what, what, what the fuck? Is there a logo of fucking hedgehog? That's metal as fuck. Uh, well, when I added, uh, uh, want to see some images of my sister's hedgehog? Yeah, that's him. Look at how cute he is. And then he came near and just started licking my hand. It was really cute. And then one second after this image was token, he bit me and engaged in an alligator death spiral for some reason. Um, they are little monsters. Don't get a hedgehog as pet, even though they're very cute. No one would remember the good Samaritan if he'd only had good intentions. He had money as well. Right. Uh, to be a good person, you need money. So if you see someone collapse in the street, uh, don't be a good Samaritan, don't help them, don't call an ambulance, just leave them be because you do not have money. I cannot believe that Roe v. Wade was overturned. It should be an individual's right to determine what medical procedures are performed on their body. So you're saying the government's overstepping its bounds and interfering on our personal freedoms? I mean, what... What could we do about that, you know? Like, what could we do to make that stop happening, you know? Well, obviously, there should be federal legislation mandating that all 50 states be legally You required. were right. You were right there. Thought we were about to have a moment. I think the joke here is that when the government oversteps its bounds, um, you start a violent coup and kill everyone. I think that's it. That's what we're going to do to stop the government, right? So, uh, of course, I'm equipped, so... Um, Let's go get these government people who um, overturned Roe v. Wade. This is not a real gun, by the way, YouTube. You don't need to demonetize me. It's an airsoft thing. Look at the magazine, right? There's no actual bullets in there. Chill the fuck out. I'm just a libertarian. <laughs> Everything about that infrastructure bill was just awful. They're all awful. Both sides. The way they increased the IRS was insane. The IRS... What an awesome idea. How could you be against the, D the increase of the IRS? It's the IRS. It's an awful system. It's a, it's... 
Yes, the IRS is an awful system. And as very intelligent young people, they have a perfect alternative, which is uh, just remove the thing they don't like. And then everything will be fine. You know, at least propose what would replace it. Or, you know, it, it just, I don't like this. Let's, let's make it go away. It's like a child's approach to something. Oh, I don't like, uh, I don't know, sweeping the floor. So I'm just going to sweep the dirt under the bed and nobody will see. You know, that's the kind of level we're at. Oh, I don't like the IRS. Let's remove it completely. Wait, you know, in politics, you're supposed to, if you make a change, know what change you make. And notably, what comes after. You know, in leftists, we have this, you know, we want to abolish capitalism, obviously, and we want to replace it with socialism. You want to abolish the IRS and replace it with nothing and hope magically everything will turn out fine, which I'm sure it was. I'm definitely sure it will, but we definitely shouldn't try. What are white people's superior at? <laughs> They're real good at violence. Violence? Genocide. It's like stealing people's lives just because they feel like it. If you are white and you know this is happening and you say nothing, then you're a killer too. What exactly are white people superior at? Insecurity? That was from a video series made by woke media outlet The Cut. I've got news for you folks. If your answer to that question is anything other than a joke or nothing, then you're a racist. Little bitch boy libertarian. I didn't know that they were like conservatives in that way. He's bitching about anti-white racism. Shut the fuck up, cracker. Come on. You never experienced racial discrimination. You have no right to claim the word racism for people, you know, who make fun of you. Fuck you. Fuck your white family. Fuck your white country, you know. And also, fun fact, I am white. So I can say all of that. Where am I a, a white anti-white racist now? Uh, do I just hate myself so much? That's the answer, isn't it? I hate myself so much that... Um, I hate white people. I mean, that's the version that conservatives say, you know. Oh, it's just internalized self-hatred. No, it's not. I think this guy's a moron and he deserves to be called a cracker. You know what's not a problem for kids who are seeking a good education? Drag queens, okay? Let me say this. Drag queens, not only are they not hurting our kids, drag queens make everything better. Drag queens are fun. Drag queens are entertainment. Um, and you know what I'll say that was totally not poll tested? I say this, a drag queen for every school. That! Y'all, this woman is the Attorney General of Michigan. I really do not care if adults want to go to drag shows or if people want to be drag. Honestly, do you. Not my thing, but whatever. But it's definitely a sexual thing and it's tied up in... A sexual thing? Do you know what a drag queen... It's just a person putting on a dress and stuff for a performance. It's not a sexual thing. You know, it's, it's people dressing up. Did you know that during Shakespeare's time, there were no female actors? Yes, all of the actors were men in drag. Oh my God, that's like so sexual. I wonder why the Catholic Church allowed that, like, you know, 500 years ago. Um, maybe because it's not sexual, you fucking moron. Seriously, can't, can't you tell LGBT people and drag queens apart. Now I understand that there's some connection there, um, but th th there's a difference between, you know, uh, cross-dressing for sexual reasons and having a drag performance, you know? One of them is sexual, the other one is entertainment. Complex, complex, I know. These libertarians seem to have problems with keeping basic things apart. You know, the, the idea that two things are different is really confusing to them pretty advanced adult notions of gender. I don't see why anyone needs to expose kids to that. Seems like pretty common sense and I don't know. Yes, why do we expose children to adult concepts of gender? We do it every day. Every time they see an adult, they see an expression of adult gender. Yeah, yeah we, we shouldn't expose children to gender at all. We should just put them in plastic boxes until they turn 18, at which point they can come out and learn what gender roles are. Um, definitely no positive part to, you know, teaching people about the fundamental part of human society, which is gender expression. They're called assault rifles and it's literally in the name. No one needs an assault rifle 15. I know, that's what I've been saying. It's like, okay, the first 14 assault rifles weren't good enough for you. You really need a 15th one. 
Oh my. Okay, this is actually funny. <laughs> so in case you didn't know, it's not an assault rifle, it's an Armalite rifle. Um, it's called AR-15 because um, of the production number, uh, there weren't, there is no AR-14, no AR-13 there. Um, AR-15 is the only one. Um, and I sympathize with this guy a tiny bit here because, yes, I do know have a conversation with people who do not understand guns at all, uh, yet try to have very high opinions of them. As mentioned before, I think the working class should never be disarmed, no matter what. So I am very much pro-gun, and I know a lot about guns, because, you know, if you like guns, you watch YouTube videos about guns. You know, there's the Forgotten Weapons YouTube channel, which has a video about every gun in the history, plus 10% more. Um, so I guess this one is not directed at me, right? I know my guns. Uh, I'm, I'm not one of those, you know, uh, pro-gun regulation people. Um, but, but I can sympathize with it. I have talked to people who don't understand guns and um, make funny arguments like how there's, there shouldn't be a 15th assault rifle because there's already 14. Did you hear about the new disinformation board under the DHS? I did. Isn't that great news? I mean, there, there's a department solely dedicated to stopping disinformation. Yeah, kind of like the Ministry of Truth. The Ministry of what? Truth. It's the department that told everybody what to think in George Orwell's dystopian novel, 1984. Uh, yes, there's people dedicated to fact-checking news channels, um, and that's the same thing as 1984. Uh, here's a fun fact for you. In Austria, um, we've had people fact-checking the news for ages now, um, and we have yet to turn into 1984. I mean, I guess we were in 1984 for about one year. Um, kind of how time works. I believe that we were going towards a way of life in which people were constantly looking to the state to solve their problems and to do things for them. You know, when the state does everything for you, it will soon take everything from you. You will then have no basis for personal freedom, political freedom, nor economic freedom. Yo, Satcher spitting the facts. Yeah, it's true. If you rely entirely on the state, the state can take away your rights, you know, it can. Uh, and it can take away the product of your labor, which is why my solution is to abolish the state entirely. Yeah, you know, trusting a strong state uh, temporarily for a revolutionary period might seem like a good idea. Uh, but if you want a permanent communist utopia, you know, Abolish the state. The ability to own property is a human right. No, it's not. <laughs> human rights are like the basic things like having a name, um, not being killed. Owning property is not a right. Uh, and it wasn't for most of uh, history, you know. Until the French Revolution, owning property was only a business for the very rich, you know. Almost nobody owned property. And there is no right to own property. There has never been. And property taxation is illegal. Is Illegal means that there's a law about it, right? And a court which can enforce the law. So I'm wondering which law and which court declared property taxation illegal. Unless you're using the word without knowing what it means, which wouldn't be that surprising. I don't try our apes, I don't like those. I drive a Daytona and I tinted the windows. She's a big nobody. So you think that in 1933 Stalin starved a lot of people to death. Um, what you're thinking about is the whole lot of more. And if only there was a YouTuber who made an in-depth video about the causes and consequences of the whole lot of more. Uh, maybe someone called Vicky1999 would have a nice 20 minute video about the topic explaining the complexities. You know, um, here's a fun fact. Just because people died um, doesn't mean someone murdered them. Yeah, uh, the rest is for you to figure out. Or maybe you watch my video and I would be. Comrade, do you think the state killed four to six million people in the last 20 years? You should watch my video on the death toll of capitalism. Capitalist states kill about 20 million a year. Um, in my video, I was conservative. I think I ended up with 14 million per year. Um, so over 20 years, if you have 20 million, how much is that? Huh? 20 years, 20 million people. Um, 
that's 400 million people who died because of the state and capitalism. Um, so really, you're just underselling how um, you know evil the state is. Hilarious. By the way, did you ever notice the PBS logo is literally those NBC robot logos? And all the other logos are all one-eyed symbolism. Have you ever noticed that? No? <laughs> you might be drinking too much fluoride. Or maybe you've been lethally injected like 50 times. You can't even think with all that aluminum in your brain. So um, the thing about the logos being eyes seems very interesting to me. I wonder if eye symbolism has anything to me. It doesn't. I put this on my face because it looks funny and I think it will fuck with libertarians. Um, about fluoride in the water, I live in Austria. Um, we don't put fluoride in the water, so, you know, checkmate. While well, your brains are melting because of a chemical which protects your teeth and has no other biological influence, um, I can drink water and be free. That's nice water. And that's where Vicky from two days ago stopped recording, didn't even record an outro. So I went through the effort of putting on another fake tattoo and wearing the exact same thing for continuity. You better appreciate that. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, I'm afraid this is it. If you want more videos like this, um, you could leave a like, though I don't really check like numbers, so maybe leave a comment about it. If you can hear uh, construction sounds, that's because they are constructing. Um, I would like to thank my Patreons very much because um, last week I got a, a bill in the mail um, for 2,661 euro, um, which um, there go all of my savings. So thank you to every single person on Patreon who ever donated to me. And of course, if you like me, why not donate as well so I can build up some savings again. Um, I would like to thank you for watching. I would like to thank you for subscribing and liking in case you do that, otherwise I don't I don't. Um, and I would like to especially thank my high level patrons who are Theon Hartley, Alan Bow, Eric Betts, Ishtaho, Daniel Pema, V, Xander Chorus, Tusne, Carissa, Daniel Hyman, Dominic Cusanelli, Emily Margot Klassen, Herdina, Jane Dementelis, Kevin Sanders, Plastro, Lazy Panda 234, Liam S, Ramit Deville, Red Shop Trooper, Sarah, Stan Masterchef, The Swiss Femboy, Theon Gillian Jr., Travis, and Yamil.